So what is self-regulated learning? It's basically an uh, umbrella concept. So it, it captures a lot of strategies that learners can use to uh, self-direct their behavior, their thoughts, their feelings and their motivation. So basically what it does is it helps you achieve your learning goals. Um, there are a couple of models, theoretical models, that describe everything about self-regulated learning. And the most important one, or the most known one, is that of Barry Zimmerman. Conclu it includes different phases. So self-regulation is also known to be cyclical. You run through three different stages, it's what Zimmerman describes. Uh, you have a forethought phase, and this includes all the strategies that learners can use before they start a task. You have a performance phase, and this is all the strategies you use while you are learning. And then you have a self-reflection phase, and that's all the strategies that you can use if you, if you have finished a learning task. And uh, Alison Littlejohn is one of these, um, these researchers, and also uh, Professor Giselczek. And they uh, found six strategies in particular. First of all, setting goals not just adopting the course goals, but setting goals that are appropriate for you. Um, second, time management. Try to set aside time, decide which steps you need um, to follow in order to reach the goals. Third um, is self-evaluation. Based on these goals that you set yourself, like uh, even when you are still following this MOOC or an online course, as, okay, good, am I doing a good job? Am I reaching my goals? A fourth one is um, using appropriate task strategies, is what we call them. So um, really think carefully, be, carefully, be, carefully sorry, about uh, the specific, um, for example, a plan. Do you need to draw a plan? Do you need to, to draw a mind map? Um, so what is going to help you uh, specifically? Fifth uh, is elaboration strategies, and that's a really important one. Uh, what does, does it mean? It means that you try to link the content of the MOOC to your own professional practice. And it could also mean that, for example, you want to extend or modify the contents of the MOOC so that it becomes even more interesting to you and it's, it helps you understand the course content even better. And then finally, and that's, that's an interesting one, that's help seeking. Actually, the researchers found that um, if learners, MOOC participants, search for help, they were less likely to find to, to uh, achieve their goals. And that is because help seeking is actually a complicated case. You can um, you can ask you can wait too long before asking for help, for example, and then you lose valuable time, and you can become frustrated because you're stuck and you, you cannot find a solution. But you can also be too quick at, at searching for help. Uh, and then, then you just don't search for your own solutions first. And especially if people don't feel very comfortable um, with technologies, they may panic a bit more quickly and, um, and therefore ask for help much earlier than they would do in a more traditional format. So those are actually six strategies that we know now that are really helpful in MOOCs. It is worthwhile to also really carefully think about your own motivation um, and, and, and find ways to make a MOOC more relevant for you. It could be that you don't like the format of the MOOC. For example, you think, okay, I need more social context. Then you can conclude just, okay, it's nothing for me. I mean, there, I cannot talk to anyone. Or, and that's what a self-regulated learner would do, you can find other ways of searching for social contexts. You can um, try to find contact with other MOOC participants. You can go to your own school team and ask for a time slot at your staff meetings to discuss the content of the MOOC. You can search online for, for a community that's, that's interested in the same topic as the MOOC. So there are lots of things also on the motivational side that you can do to help you succeed in an online environment.